imagine a train that hovers above its super-powered magnetic rails soaring at speeds of 270 miles per hour, turning a 45-minute cab ride into an 8-minute blur. This is not some fanciful pie-in-the-sky vision of the future. It is now. It is happening right now. It's been happening for decades. In 1979, German engineers built the first magnetic levitation train. The problem is it's been happening elsewhere. Like China, the first country to have an up-and-running maglev you could buy tickets to, a 19-mile track that whisks people from downtown Shanghai to the airport, and other countries in Asia and Europe are starting to get on the levitating bandwagon too, leaving us in the dust of our 19th century rails. So I visited Phyllis Wilkins, chair of the U.S. Maglev Coalition, at her office in Baltimore to ask her, why don't we have it yet? The reason we don't have it is because we haven't had a policy in this country for investing in high-speed rail. Is there someone that you could point to and say, the holdup is because of this group? No, it's, it's much larger than that. It's the fact that the transportation dollars are shrinking. Leaving less for states and cities that need to just maintain their already extensive infrastructure, let alone build entire new ones. So when you start talking about, well, let's build a new system, people are saying, wait a minute, this is, these are our dollars. In a 2003 report, the Federal Railroad Administration estimated a 40-mile track from Washington, D.C. to Baltimore would cost $4.3 billion to build. That's the project Wilson has been spearheading since 1992. We would be taking the travel time down to a fraction of what it is right now. It took me 45 minutes to drive up here from Washington. It would take you 18 minutes to go from right across the street from the convention center to Union Station with a stop at, at BWI Airport. And Wilkins' persistence may just pay off. Last spring, the Obama administration pledged $8 billion in funds for states to invest in high-speed and inner-city rail projects. Should a state or a group of states want to develop one of the existing corridors using maglev, they are free to do so. So despite all the politics, delays, and questions, is maglev really the future? Oh, I think it has to be the future. First we started out with roads and canals and then rail and then aviation and now you add, need to add a new mode and you need to add a mode that's going to attract people by its safety and its speed and its convenience and the fact that it's environmentally benign. Both Flattow and Wilkins noted that the technology's ultimate success could hinge on a combination of public funding and private investments. For Discovery News, I'm Jorge Ribas.